everybody! It's Miss Sherry from Christ Church Children's Ministry. Can you guess where I am? I'm at Christ Church Butterfield and I am in the hangout zone for the elementary kids. And I wanted to show you this amazing room because it's where they worship and praise God and learn more about God's teachings from the Bible. And when you grow up, if you go to Christ Church Butterfield, this will be your hangout spot. So I just had to show you this amazing room. It's really, really big. And I can't just imagine all the fun that happens here. And I bet all those who worship in this space can't wait till it's safe enough to come back. And you know, today I had to bring my good friend, Mr. Potato Head. And what? I was wondering too, are you all ready for today's story? Do you have your eyes on the screen? And is your ears ready to hear? How about your hands and feet? Are they settled and not distracted by anything around you? How about your thinking caps? Are they on? Oh, good. And we know, what's our favorite part? Getting our hearts ready. Will you all fold your hands and bow your heads and pray with me? Gracious and loving God, thank you for bringing all our friends together today. For we come in your name, God, to worship and praise you. And God, just help us to learn from the story today, Lord. Help us to focus on that story so that we can apply it to our own lives and that we can shape our hearts more like yours. Oh God, help keep us from any distractions today and keep our thoughts clear so we can be focused on you. And all God's children said, amen. Well, thank you for praying with me today, friends. And you know, I brought my special book. So I'm gonna look in for a clue for today's story. And in today's story, King David, he made a bad choice and it affected someone that works for him. Can you think of a person that might help a king and um, might have a job that would help a king? Someone who would feed his animals. What a great answer. It's not the animal keeper or who would tend to his animals. Anybody else? Somebody would clean his palace. Oh, good answer. It's not the people who clean his palace. <gasps> Somebody would cook for him. Cook for him. Oh, because last week our story was all about him inviting Mephibosheth over for his meals. What a great answer. Oh, it wasn't the cook. It wasn't the cook. Now, in a lot of stories, King David fought a lot of battles. And the people who would help him fight would be called soldiers. Wow, you guys are so smart. That's who I have in my Bible today. I have a soldier. And the soldier was affected by King David's bad choice. I don't want to give it away because I want you all to pay attention to the story. But pay attention to what King David did. That was a really bad choice and made God very upset. And it also affected one of his best soldiers. So pay attention to the story and see if you can find where that happens. And right before we get to our lesson, let's just do a short review. We learned a few weeks ago that God chose David to be king instead of Saul. Saul was jealous and angry about this, and he tried to hurt David. David showed mercy even though Saul hated him. After Saul died, David became the king, and God promised that the Messiah, Jesus, would come from David's family. David consistently trusted God. In fact, David was known as a man after God's own heart. We learn that King David showed incredible kindness to Mephibosheth, 
And I'm sure you remember that Mephibosheth was King Saul's grandson and Jonathan's son. Jonathan and David were best friends. After David learned that Mephibosheth was alive after the rest of Saul's family had passed away, he showed incredible kindness to him, even though he didn't have to. He gave him land that used to be owned by his grandfather, King Saul, and provided for him for any need he might have. He even had him join him for all his meals and treated him like a member of his own family. After all these stories we've learned, it may seem like David, who was a great king and never made any mistakes, but let me assure you, only Jesus is perfect. Our story today is called David Sinned and Was Restored. Our big picture question is, how is Jesus the perfect king? We already saw from past Bible stories that Saul was not the perfect king for Israel. He sinned and God rejected Saul as king. David was a great king, but as we will see in today's Bible story, he sinned too. Only Jesus is the perfect king. How was Jesus the perfect king? Jesus perfectly rules over the universe as the king of kings. Hey friends, I'm Megan and I'm Jessie. Jessie, how is your new bike? Are you still loving it? Oh my, Galactic Speed Racer 20 inch trail bike? Uh, well I gotta tell you the truth, Megan. I'm actually not uh, allowed to ride it right now. My dad took it away. Oh really? How come? I made a wrong choice. Dad said to only ride it in our yard and to not go out on the street. But... You rode it on the street? Yeah. Now I'm not allowed to ride my bike for two whole weeks. Oh, I'm sorry, Jesse. Thanks. But I should have stayed off the street like my dad said. Yeah, you're right about that. Your dad didn't want you to ride on the street because he wanted you to be safe. God's like that. He gives us rules for our good. David broke God's rules and made wrong choices in today's Bible story. Let's hear what happened. David was the king of Israel. One spring, David sent out the army to fight. He put another man in charge of the army, and David stayed home. One evening, David was walking on the roof of his palace. He looked out and saw a beautiful woman named Bathsheba. Bathsheba was the wife of Uriah, one of the best men in David's army. David made up a plan. He told the leader of the army to send Uriah into the hardest part of the battle. David hoped Uriah would be killed. David's plan worked. Uriah was killed. So David took Bathsheba into his house to be his wife. God knew what David did, and he was not happy with David. God sent Nathan the prophet to talk to David. Nathan told David a story. A traveler came to a rich man who had many animals. The rich man did not give the traveler his own animal. Instead, he took a poor man's lamb, the only lamb the poor man had, and gave it to the traveler to eat. This story made David feel angry. The rich man should be punished, David said. You are the man, Nathan said. God had made David king and given him more than he needed, but David took what wasn't his. David realized he had sinned against God, so David wrote a psalm. He told God he was sorry and asked God to forgive him, and God did. David wrote, God changed my heart. David realized he could try to please God with sacrifices, but that would not be enough to pay for his sin. David's heart needed to change so that he would not want to sin again. 
God hates sin because it dishonors Him and hurts us and other people. When we sin, God forgives us because Jesus took the punishment for our sins when He died on the cross. Jesus changes our heart so that we no longer want to sin. Doing what God says not to do is called sin. And we learned in today's story that David sinned too. The prophet Nathan helped him understand his sin. And David felt so sorry for his sin and asked God to forgive him. And God forgave David. We sin when we do things God says not to do too. When we disobey our parents or treat someone unkindly, we sin. We can ask God to forgive us just like David did. If we trust that Jesus was punished for our sin, then God will forgive our sin too. Our big picture question is, how is Jesus the perfect king? Jesus perfectly rules over everything. King David did many good things, but he also did wrong things. He was a sinner just like all of us. The only one who has no sin is Jesus. Jesus is the perfect king and he will rule over everything forever. Our key verse for this unit is, your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Your rule is for all generations. Psalm 145, 13a. Now David wrote Psalm 145. David was a great king and he was powerful and good. But as we saw today, David was not a perfect king. Jesus is our perfect king. And Jesus perfectly rules over the universe as the King of Kings. God's kingdom will never end and will last forever. Will you all read the verse with me? Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Your rule is for all generations. Psalm 145, 13a. Are you all ready to do the motions together for the verse. Can you all stand up so we can do them together? Are you all standing and ready to do the motions? Okay, let's do them all together. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Your rule is for all generations. Psalm 145, 13a. Great job. Let's do it one more time. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Your rule is for all generations. Psalm 145, 13a. Great job. Keep practicing. Hi, preschoolers, Miss Natalie here. I am so happy to get to come in here at the end of the lesson and chat with you guys about today's story. Today's story was a big story. It was an interesting story, wasn't it? So uh, we like to look at David and we like to see all the things that he's been doing and teaching us how to do good things like trust God and love God and share his blessings with others. God blessed him and he shared that with others. Um, but today we didn't see some good stuff, did we? No, we saw in David what we all have too. We all have sin in our life. No matter how hard we try to follow God's teachings, we are always gonna mess up. We are gonna sin and sin is evil in God's eyes. God can't get near sin, but David does teach us what to do when we sin. At first he tried to cover it up, didn't he? But then 
when the prophet Nathan came and spoke to him, he was struck in his heart. He felt so bad about what he had done wrong, and he stopped lying about it, and he stopped trying to cover it up. He realized what he had done was sin, and it was bad to the people involved, but more importantly, he had sinned against God, and he felt so, so sad. So what he did was to say, I'm sorry. And I won't do it again. That is repenting, boys and girls. So David taught us how to do that today. Because we're going to mess up. We are going to sin. And we've got to be quick to fess up. To say, oops, I sinned. God, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. And we're so thankful that we can do that because of Jesus, right? Jesus is the reason that we can talk to God and he hears our sorries and he forgives us. Jesus died and took all the sin away forever. And if we believe in Jesus and we worship him and follow him and say that he is our Lord, then we can ask God to forgive us all the time, anytime, and he will. So that is an amazing thing. So David did teach us something today, still didn't he? Um, but we are going to need God's help in our hearts to make sure that we aren't sneaky with our sin and that we are quick to repent. So that is what I'm going to pray about today. If you would please bow your head and close your eyes. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we don't want to sin, but we know that we are humans and we are not perfect. And we are not God, and we are going to sin, Lord. And we ask that you would teach us the good things that we should do. First of all, help us to learn those things, Lord. But when we do sin, we ask that you would help us to not fib and lie about it, Lord, but to, to repent right away, to say that we're sorry and that we won't do it again, and to mean it, Lord, and to ask for your forgiveness so that we can be forgiven of our sins and they won't hurt us and they won't hurt other people like we saw in today's story, Lord. Sin hurts people and it hurts you, Lord. It hurts your heart and we don't want that. So Lord, um, give us your strength and your wisdom and help us to be quick to repent. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, boys and girls, um, I hope you had a great week. I hope you have a great week also. And um, don't run off too fast because we do have some worship music for you up next. That'll be lots of fun to just um, sing to God and with your hearts and with your mouth. And so hang in for that. And then we will see you next week. Have a super duper week.